Father God, we come before you this afternoon just to reverence your name, O oh God. We come to lift you up, O oh God. We come to magnify you, O oh God. We just say thank you for another day at life this afternoon, O oh God, because somebody didn't make it, O oh God. God, you kept us yet another day, O oh God. You've given us the strength to use our limbs, O oh God, to be able to walk, O oh God. You've given us a voice, O oh God, to be able to praise and worship you, O oh God, and to lift you up, O oh God. Father God, we just say thank you. We thank you for giving us yet another day, oh God, our family members, our friends, oh God, our coworkers and our colleagues, oh God, and even those that are connected to us, oh God. Father God, I ask that you touch each and every person that's on the prayer line this afternoon, oh God, those that are called in already and those that are getting ready to call in, oh God. Father God, I ask that you increase as we decrease, oh God. Father God, I ask that you have your way in our lives this afternoon, oh God, and each and every day, oh God. Father God, we come before you laying it all out at the altar, oh God, whatever it is that we're struggling with, oh God, whether it's surrender, surrendering our will to you, oh God, we ask that you continue to purge us and clean us of everything that's not like you, oh God, Father God, we ask that you continue to connect us to those that we need to be connected to, oh God, the spiritual leaders, oh God, and our spiritual brothers and sisters, oh God, our sisters and brothers in Christ, oh God. Father God, I ask that you continue to disconnect us from those that aren't for us, oh God. Father God, I ask that you continue to dispatch your warmer angels around each and every one of us, oh God. Those that continue to stand in the gap for somebody this afternoon, oh God. And those that are sick and shut in right now, oh God. Whoever it is that might be laying in a hospital bed, oh God. Laying possibly on their deathbed, oh God. Father God, I ask that you just give them peace right now, oh God. Give their family members peace, oh God. Let them know that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and you will never leave nor forsake us, oh God, but yet and still you make no mistakes, oh God. Father God, we thank you for just being God all by yourself, oh God. We thank you for being our Prince of Peace, oh God. We thank you for being our protector, oh God, our provider, oh God. Our father when we feel fatherless, oh God. Our mother when we feel motherless, oh God. We thank you for being our shelter during the rain, oh God. We thank you for being our water when we're thirsty and our bread when we're hungry, oh God. We thank you for being the true and living king, oh God, because there's no one like you, oh God. There's no one before you. There's nobody after you, and there's nobody beside you, oh God. We thank you for the continued protection, oh God. We thank you for the continued traveling grace and mercy, oh God, as we go to and from, oh God, where there's a job, oh God, whether it's a school, oh God, whether it's a, a, a medical appointment, oh God, where, wherever it is that our feet may tread, oh God, I ask that you make each and everything good and work work good in our favor, oh God. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Father God, I ask that you keep a special hedge of protection around Pastor Chantel and Pastor Trey, oh God. Allow them to continue to be Use for your glory, O oh God. Allow them to continue to sow into our lives, O oh God, so that we can sow into someone else's life, O oh God. Father God, I ask that you continue to enlarge their territory, O oh God. I ask that you continue to pour out your anointing onto them, O oh God. I ask that you continue to open up the windows of heaven, O oh God, and just continue to use them how you've always used them, O oh God. Whatever it is that they've come to give us this afternoon, O oh God, I ask that the word be uplifting, oh God, and encouraging, oh God. I ask that you pour into their spirits, oh God, everything that you have laid out in foundation for them, oh God. Father God, I ask that you continue to keep them connected, oh God. I ask that you touch each and every person in their congregation, oh God, each and every person that has contact with them, oh God, whether it's through the virtual church, oh God, or whether it's in the church itself, oh God. Father God, we thank you right now. We thank you, oh God, for leading us, oh God, keeping us, oh God, protecting us, oh God. God, we just magnify your name this afternoon, oh God, because somebody didn't make it this afternoon, let alone this morning, oh God, and somebody might not make it tonight, oh God. God, we come against the plan of the enemy, oh God, with the suicidal thoughts, oh God, the thoughts of depression, oh God, the thoughts of oppression, oh God, the financial heartache, oh God. We come against the spirit of poverty, oh God. We come against the spirit of lack, oh God. Father God, we come against the spirit of cancer, oh God, diabetes, oh God heart disease, oh God, each and everything that comes to attack the body of Christ, oh God, we come against it and we call it null and void, oh God. For somebody on this line this afternoon, be encouraged. The best is still yet to come. This is only the second month of 2017, February the 3rd to be exact, and 
You have to be encouraged. You have to know that God is and will always be there to protect you and to deliver you and to set you free, no matter what it looks like, no matter how you may feel. It's not about what you see in the physical, but it's about what you see in the spirit. You've got to walk by faith and not by sight. You've got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. God, everything for somebody on this line, everything that you're going through is not by accident. It's necessary. Everything that you've seen and everything that you've heard, everything that you might have felt that was the, 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 the pain that was wrecked in your body, God said it's necessary. You're going through what you're going through because it's necessary. You have to go through in order to grow through. You have to grow through in order to get through. It, 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 it's, it's just the beginning. You've got to hold on. And, and when I say hold on, just like you would hold a child's hand when you're walking across the street, street and the light is red and you say, hold on to my hand and don't let go. And when the light is red, it's my time to go. It's your time to go. It's your time to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Just like when you want to go walk that 5K walk or you want to go ride that bike or you want to just, just run the race, this is a race that you're running. And just know that God is at the finish line. You can't give up. If you need a bottle, if you got to take a break and, and, and drink a bottle of water like they do when they do those races, take a break and, and drink that bottle of water. Because guess what? This is only the beginning. God said you have to hold on and hold on and hold on and hold on like your life depends on it because your life does depend on it. It's, it's, it's just the beginning. You know, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Sometimes we, we have to learn how to embrace the struggle, and that's the problem with people in this generation. It's not just the churchgoers. It's not just the believers of Christ. It's not just the body of Christ. You can go to church and be uh, just like they say when you when you have a basketball game or a baseball game or whatever and you have that bench, you can be a bench warmer. Guess what? You could be that person that's sitting in the, in the church of God and you could be sitting there warming up the pews and just going to church faithfully on every Sunday. You can go to Bible study on Tuesdays and you can do the virtual church on Mondays and Wednesdays, whatever days that it falls on. But you've got to hold on. You've got to know that you know that you know. Just like when you go get that paycheck every two weeks, you know that your Bank of America or your Chase account is going to have an automatic deposit every two weeks. You've got to know that God is going to deposit some things into your life, and you can't withdraw it until he tells you to. It, 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 it's just like when they put a block on your car. You, you travel out of the country, and you didn't notify the bank that you travel out of the country. And they say, well, we put a block on your card because we weren't notified of your traveling arrangements. That's, that's, that's what God does. God works like the people at the bank when they put a block on your card. He's going to block some things. He go, he's going to stop you from, from, from being able to do some things, from being able to withdraw that money that you want to withdraw out of that bank account. Why? Because it's not time for you to withdraw it. He's going to deposit some things, and then when it's time for you to withdraw it, he's going to allow you to withdraw it. And guess what you're going to do? Just like when you withdraw the money from the bank account and you go pay your rent and you go pay whatever bill you need to pay and you pay that 10% of your tithe, God is going to allow you to withdraw that thing, and you're going to deposit into somebody else. You're going to help somebody else. So, so, so don't get worried. Don't get weary in well-doing, but in all things, give thanks and praise and worship God and lay it all at the altar for somebody that's on this line. I don't care if you have to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and you just wake up and you just pray. You praise your way through that situation. You pray your way through that situation. Just like you go and you cry to your mama, you cry to your daddy, you, you cry to your friends, your coworkers. You can tell everybody your problems but God. It's time out for telling everybody your issues and bring your issues to God. It's time out for crying about it, and it's time to start praying about it. It's time to start letting go and letting God. I don't know who this is for, but mm -hmm. you, you, just, you just, you got to get it. It's time for you to just understand that you've done all that you can do, but if you have not yet realized, you're struggling because God is allowing you to struggle. It's not because you didn't pay that bill on time. It's not because 
the HR department, you know, messed up on your paperwork and you, you didn't get the full amount of the check, it's because God allowed it to happen. He allows things to be stopped. He allows things to be blocked. He allows things to cease and desist because he wants to get your undivided, undivided attention. And for somebody on this line, he's trying to get your undivided attention. So it's like, you, I, I always say this, it, it's like when you was a child and your mom tells you um, the stove is hot, don't touch the stove. That's what God is saying. The situation is hot. The situation is rocky. The situation is, you, you know, the, the, the foundation is not solid. And if you take one more step, you might just sink into that sinkhole. It's just like quicksand. You know, that you, you fall into the quicksand and it dries up and you get stuck. That's how the situation is. If you don't stop, you're going to dry up like quicksand and get stuck. And nobody can help you. Your mama can't help you. Your daddy can't help you. The only person that you could call on is King Jesus. Mm -hmm. So for somebody on this line, you've got to push. You've got to push. You've got to push. You've got to push. And I, it, it, you just, I just keep hearing the word push. You've got to push. Push. Just like when the, the, the women are having kids and you're in the labor and delivery room and your husband is telling you, your boyfriend is telling you, you whoever's in there in the delivery room, the doctor, the nurse, and all the medical team is telling you, okay, I need you to take a deep breath. So what are we going to do? We're going to take a deep breath and we're going to push, 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 yes. push. Keep going. Keep pushing. Keep going. Keep pushing. Take that deep breath. Count to ten and say, God, I got this. I can do this. I, I, I just need a little bit more help. I need a little bit more help. And God said he's going to give you that push. You've got to push. So keep pushing, keep pressing, mm -hmm. keep praying, keep leaning on the word of God because God said it's only the beginning. The struggle is real, but so are the blessings. The struggle is real, but so are the blessings. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. For, some, for, for somebody that's on this line, you, you done cried about it, and you done cried about it, and you done cried about it. Well, guess what? Stop crying about it because today is your joyful day. Today, joy has come this afternoon. Joy came when you woke up this morning, and joy is still going to be there when you go to bed tonight. Mm, Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Sister Brittany, you uh, touched on everything I was going to say. Amen. So I thank the Lord for it because I just kept hearing push as well. And the Lord kept telling me to tell, pray until something happens. Pray until we see God move. Pray. Press until we see God move. And that's what we were going to talk about today anyway. We want to talk about uh, God supplying our needs, God being there for us, him being Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who provides for us. So whatever you have going on, Trust, believe, and know that God's got it. God's got it, and he's got you. Amen? So we're going to close out in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you now for the word. We thank you, Lord God, for using Sister Brittany. We thank you, Lord God, for the woman of God. We ask you now, Lord God, to anoint her afresh. Restore, replenish, and revive her, Lord God. Strengthen her, Lord God, for today. Lord God, replenish and replace all that she's thrown out in the natural, Lord God, and in the spirit. Lord God, we thank you now that we're able to, Lord God, Speak to our atmosphere. Speak to even ourselves, Lord God, and set aside every weight that easily besets us. We're able, Lord God, to bring everything that we have to you, Lord God. We understand, Lord God, that we can no longer whine and murmur and complain. We can't take it to the phone, Lord God. We have to take it to the throne. Lord God, every situation from this point forward, Lord God, we're bringing it to you. Every stressor, we're bringing it to you. Every bill, Lord God, we're bringing it to you. Every argument, Lord God, that is trying to ensue. Lord God, we're going to use a kind word to dispel the anger. We're going to walk in peace, and we're going to bring it to you, Lord God. Amen. We thank you right now, Heavenly Father, for reminding us of some things and for giving us, Lord God, your promises. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we praise you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. We say hallelujah. Glory to God in 8 9. I thank you all for joining us today. I am thoroughly excited about what God is doing because I see and I know that God is moving, and we are in his presence because we are moving in harmony. 
we are moving and everybody is hearing the same thing. No one is out, left out and no one has been um, rejected or stepped over or left aside. God is truly wanting to be our provider. He wants to be El Shaddai more than enough. Amen? And so I'm just challenging you. Try him at his word. If you on the line this morning, you heard Brother Rick's testimony just before he opened us up in prayer, and he said he tried God at his word, and God opened up the window in heaven, and he still is trying to figure out what to do with all that's coming in. He said now he's just giving things away because he's in the overflow. If that's the story you want for your life, if that's the reality and the, the, the manifestation you want in your life, then do what God is calling you to do. Don't hold back. Don't hesitate. Don't delay. Don't murmur and complain. Don't talk about it. Don't be negative. Think positive. When the enemy tries to bring you some negative thoughts, you reject it. You send it back to the sender. You rebuke it, and you praise God right there in that moment because you're not going to receive the negative reports of the Lord, of the negative reports of the enemy. You're going to receive the report of the Lord. He asked, whose report will you believe? We believe the report of the Lord. Amen? So I'm excited about what God is doing. Let us stand on the report and the promises of the Lord. Amen? So I'm looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow morning, first thing, 5.30 a.m. for prayer. I know Sister Marlise has a right now word. I know that God has been working with her and giving her some things because guess what? She's been telling us and sharing with us all week long in the mornings what's been going on, bits and pieces. So when she puts it all together tomorrow morning, I, w I don't want you to miss it because I'm not going to miss it. We love you all. We're looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m., and then tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. for financial fitness. We love you all. Go forth and have a blessed and prosperous day in the Lord. And I have one other praise report really quickly if you have time. We were praying for Sister Debbie who was in the hospital and had cancer, and they transported her from here in Port Huron to Detroit at Henry Ford Hospital, and she was having blockage and wasn't able to release any fluids. Nothing was coming out. Nothing was passing through. Amen. No, no, none of her, nothing was exiting her body, period. Her stomach was swelling. The pain was intense. And we prayed for her. They, they took her to Henry Ford, and we didn't find out till two days later that just after she got out of the hospital, the, the, the um, ambulance ride at the hospital, the blockage cleared up. The blockage cleared up so much so till she couldn't even tell them that she had to go to the restroom or anything. It all happened at one time. Her body started releasing all of the fluid. So they didn't know what to do. And so for the time that she's been up there, they have checked her, did a whole blood panel, and reduced her medication, told her that things are looking better than what they were last time she was there, and they drained the last of the fluid off of her, and she's been released today. Amen. So I just want to let you all know that the prayers of the righteous are availing much. There is there are fruits coming from this line. I can't speak for no other prayer line, but I can speak for what God is doing here and for those that we're lifting up. So I challenge you all, keep lifting each other up in prayer. Keep praying for one another. Keep calling each other's name out in prayer. And if you don't have the list with all the intercessors' names, please reach out to myself and Pastor Trace. Remember that tomorrow sometime you'll get a call from myself. Sister Marlies, Sister Margaret, or Sister Marcel, and we're going to ask you just a few questions and find out if you're coming here in April for the conference for ETM. We love you all. Don't 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 get so um, hesitant to answer the questions because they're re we're really trying to tailor a training specifically for you. So if you're coming, let us know. If you're trying to come, let us know you're trying, and we'll do what we can to help you. And we're going to come here together so that we can worship the fellowship together. Just ETM. Amen? We love you all. Reach out to Pastor Trey and myself if you need training or if you need anything. We love you. Go forth and have a blessed and prosperous day in the Lord.